And welcome to Abundant Living, a casual look into the Word of God with the preaching ministry of Dr. Gary Bradley, minister of the Mayfair Church of Christ, located in Jones Valley in Huntsville. The Mayfair Church is a loving Christ-centered church with a vision and a dream of sharing Jesus with the Tennessee Valley and the entire world. Every Sunday, Gary touches people's lives with the good news, and now he wants to share it with you one-on-one. So join us for the next few minutes as together we find the solutions to life's problems. Are you searching for those answers this morning? We believe the answers are there in God's Word, and that each of us can have the abundant life God wants to give us. He reigns forever. And now your host, Dr. Gary Bradley. Good morning and welcome to Abundant Living. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday morning. It's had some beautiful weather here lately, haven't we? Since all the storms hopefully have passed on and uh, passed over. And so we just settle down into some real beautiful sunshine. And uh, I hope all is well with you this morning. I do appreciate the comments by email and in public and uh, sometimes I'll get a phone call and somebody will want to tell me about their life and what they're going through. And that helps me because each Sunday, I, you know, I have to decide, okay, what do I talk to my church family about? That's what I preach. And what do I talk to my TV family about? And uh, I'm still preaching every other Sunday at the Central Church in Athens, and I invite all of our friends in Limestone and over Madison County, over in that area, to come and be with us. We start at 9 o'clock, and we have Sunday school at 1030. And then they have life groups at uh, 630, I think, on Sunday night. You can check that. And the Mayfair Church, and who pays for this program and uh, has been supporting it since the very beginning. Uh, their services are at 9 o'clock, and Jason Bobby is the preacher there. So if you come to Mayfair, I may not be there, but uh, I would still love to see you. When I'm not preaching, I am there, but Jason is doing a great job in sharing the Word every Sunday, and they also start at 9 o'clock. So you're always invited to the Mayfair. And if you've just moved to town and all these apartments and all these new houses, my word, we do hope that as these people come into town, we welcome them. Huntsville is a wonderful place to live. I don't know where, you know, we have cemetery lots <laughs> bought here. So we plan to go to heaven from here. And I know, I hope you do too. So this is a wonderful place to live and to uh, worship and to work and to influence as many people for the things that are right as possible. This morning, and probably as you well know, when I get started, I hardly ever finish one. I tend to lean, o lean on over, get on over into the second one, the second show. And so, uh, with the new movie that's out about Jesus and the, uh, the revival that has begun. It started in Kentucky. If you've been watching on Facebook, they don't say anything about it on the uh, news. But uh, there's a revival that is taking place around this country. And I thought in praying and preparing for today and next Sunday, I thought it would just really be important for us to go back and just say a good word about the Lord. Just say a good word about the Lord. Like in Matthew 13, uh, Matthew 16, verse 13, when the apostles had, and the Lord had just fed the 5,000. And uh, he got them together and he said, now in verse 13, he said, now who do, these, who do men say the Son of Man is? And that's what I want to talk about today because I think more than I can ever remember, I need to talk about this because there's more confusion about who the Lord is right now than ever before. And I think C.S. Lewis said it a long time ago when he wrote that the Lord is either a liar because he said he was the Son of God, he said he came to redeem the world. He, the angel told Mary, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for it is he who shall save his people from their sins. And so then he said, he said that he was uh, the Son of God. So evidently he's misguided. He's, he's a liar. Or he's a lunatic. That's what C.S. Lewis said. 
And uh, this is not uncommon because in Mark chapter 3 the family thought the same thing. That Jesus was, one translation says, He was beside Himself. He was, in, he was not in His right mind to think that He was the Messiah. He was the one that had been prophesied would, that would come and save the world. Because what they thought was saving the world meant getting the Roman Empire off our neck and making God's people uh, who they used to be, who they, the chosen people who they were in the Old Testament. And so then he, he's uh, uh, claiming to be something that he's not, so he's misguided, or he's the Lord. You know, on the people in Acts 2, when Peter preached, and he preached a very difficult sermon because he, he convicted the people. See, that's Pentecost. There was 13 or 14, every nation under heaven had somebody there. That was a big Jewish holiday. And Peter got up and spoke, and they said, oh, this man's been drinking, and uh, he's drunk. And Peter said, oh, no, we're, I'm not drunk. Uh, but this, this manifestation of the Holy Spirit coming with noise and, and, and with uh, great, uh, uh, great sounds and thunders, and, and the Holy Spirit fell upon the apostles, and they began to speak with other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. So he says, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. This is just a fulfillment of prophecy. And then he preached a sermon and he let them know beyond any shadow of a doubt that this same Jesus whom ye crucified hath become both Lord and Christ. I love that verse. I think it's verse 36 of Acts 2. Lord and Christ. A lot of us in need and know that we need a Savior. If you are aware of your relationship with the Lord, you're aware of your sins, you know you need a Savior. But he also said, He's our Lord. He's our Master. And we belong to Him. And He tells us what to do. And it's for our good. That's what that, in Jeremiah 6, 16, He says, Ask for the old paths that ye may walk therein. Get back to the Word of God. Get back to the Bible and see what the Bible says. And they said, we will not walk therein. And that's so sad, isn't it? So then we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I haven't been to the movie, but I plan to go because I want to see it. I, you, know, you know I've said this for a number of years. I am happy when anybody thinks about Jesus. I, I, about religious holidays, we don't know for sure is that if that's the exact day. You know, we don't know if it's really December or the resurrection in April. You know, but the fact it took place, he was born of a virgin. He was resurrected on the third day. When the disciples came, the women came. They saw the tomb was empty. Who rolled the stone away? So we'll hopefully talk about that in a couple of weeks. So then, let me begin this morning by using the word be. We need to believe in Christ. And it's so easy to do that because we have a book that tells us, just like if I were studying chemistry, which I had a hard time studying chemistry, but I'd need to read the textbook. Or if I was studying history, I need to read the text. Here's our textbook about Jesus. I think I told you last Sunday, if you begin in Genesis and read through Revelation and you don't see Jesus in there, it's somewhere in the context, then you misread it. Because in John 1.1 1, 1, he says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God, and there was not anything made that hath been made. But then in verse 14, and the Word, the Logos, and the Word became flesh and blood and dwelt among us. That's one of my favorite verses. That's when Jesus came, walking in light of the Scriptures to fulfill the Old Testament prophecies about where He was born, what He was going to do. But in John, as you know, that's one of my favorite books because when I'm studying, when somebody is an unbeliever, and they come to me, and like I told you a couple of weeks ago, I had one of my favorite persons. 
uh, at church come to me and say, I want us to study together. Do you have any time you can study with me? I don't want my children knowing more about the Bible than I do. And I just can't forget that because it is so genuine. It is so precious that a daddy would want to be the spiritual leader of the family. And he would say, Preacher, help me to know. And so we began and we studied the book of John. Why? Because John will give you seven miracles that Jesus performed that will cause you to cognitively believe that he's everything he claimed to be and he claimed to be the Son of God. In John chapter 20 and verse 30, let me see if I can find it right quick for you. You might turn and read it with me. Uh, in John 20 and verse 30, he says, Jesus did many other miracles and signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you might believe, there's my point right there, in that you might believe that Jesus, that's an ordinary name from an ordinary town, Nazareth, you know, that's what, that's what uh, when Philip found Nathaniel in John 1, he said, uh, I found the Messiah, and he said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? They just had a bad, a bad reputation. And I love Philip saying what he did. He said, I'm not going to argue with you. Just come and see. And that's what I have tried to have that attitude my entire ministry. I'm not going to argue with you. Here it is written. We can either read it and believe it or walk away from it. So here's the facts. And here's the proof that we need to believe in Him. Now, it's more than just mental assent. It's more than just saying, I know that Jesus is a Christ, the Son of God. Well, what are you going to do about it? Okay, so many times, uh, many times preachers tell people that's all you have to say. Just acknowledge He's a Christ. There's, there's a verse in James, write it down. James 2, I think it's verse 19. It says, there, James says, you believe that there's one God? That's good. That's well with you. Even the demons believe and tremble. That's mentally agreeing that He's everything He claimed to be. And then the other one is in John 20 and verse 41 and 42. And many of the uh, leaders in the temple believed that he was the Christ, but they would not confess him lest, he be, lest they be put out of, the, uh, out of the synagogue. And so there you have the idea of just knowing the facts is not enough. Just cognitively agreeing that he's the Christ. You've got to do something about it. You've got to act on it. And that's what the Bible calls, especially in the book of John, that's, that's what the Bible calls a believer. It's just not the facts. It's the action that comes with now you know, just like in Matthew 7, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So then we need to believe in Christ. Now, children that are born into this world are not believers. They have to be taught. And they have to see the example of Christian, hopefully of Christian parents. In Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, that's facts. That's the information that's been given to you. And we have enough, as I said here, that you, this book was written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing ye may have life in His name. And the word believing there means that you follow through with it. You just don't mentally agree. Yes, I believe that He's the Christ. That doesn't make you a believer in the sense the Bible talks about one. And so then those two verses, that one in James about the demons believe, that is they know. They know. He said, you believe God is one? Well, good. Good for you. But even the demons believe in that and tremble. And so this information is leading us in the right direction. The, the information is helping us to understand who the Lord really is. And that even, he, 
you know, back to, back to my verse in Matthew uh, 16 and verse 13. He said, Who do men say that I the Son of Man am? Well, I could ask that today, and I'd get about as many questions as, as uh, uh, really wrong answers as Jesus did. They said, Oh, they say that you're Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Well, no, you can't go to heaven believing that Jesus was Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. There were uh, 12, there were four major prophets and 12 minor prophets. And so then you can't go to heaven believing that he's a prophet. He was a prophet, but he was a son of God. He went to Calvary and there shed his blood for the forgiveness of your sins and mine. And so it's, I just need to make that point because we have more non-believers now, I think, than ever before. Or if they're not non-believers, they believe partially because they say Jesus is a way to heaven, but He's not the only way. Well, He said He was. John 14 and verse 6. And so it's important that we believe in Christ. See, your, your belief determines your behavior. If you believe that we live in a wonderful world, a wonderful country, we have so many blessings, we got a lot of problems, we always have, we always will. But it's still the best place in the world to live. And therefore, when I believe that, I need to act like that. I need to obey the laws of the land. I need to obey the laws of God. I need to respect other people. I need to spend my life seeing what I can do for other people. Like, let's, let's use uh, Solomon as an example. You know, he was the last of the kings. There were three kings in Israel. When they came to the Lord and they said, we want a king like the nation round about us. We're going to preach on this at uh, Central Sunday. Uh, but we're going to preach on Saul. Saul was the king. He started out good, but he ended up in a terrible manner because he was so jealous. He, in, he did not obey the Lord completely. You remember he was told to destroy oh, the land and everything in it, including all the people because they were Philistines and they were, they were uh, the people that were uh, rebelling against God and they were a terrible threat to the children of Israel. And so he told Saul to go in and Saul comes back and he obeys partially because he, he saved old King Agag, the king. He saved the best of the cattle. And when Samuel met him on the road, he said, what's this noise I hear? What's this, all these cattle and all this stuff? You were supposed to destroy all that. He said, it's, I came back to offer it for sacrifice. Isn't that wonderful? No, not if it takes a place of obedience. He said, it's better to obey than to offer a sacrifice. To hearken than the fat of rams. First Samuel I think it's verse, chapter 15, verse 8, 7 and 8. And so then we've got to believe, and we've got to believe all of it. Not that He's one among the saviors, but He is the only Savior. So then we must believe in Christ. Secondly, when we do, just like after I studied with my friends the book of John, the very next book is the book of, book of Acts. So we need to belong to Christ. Now don't leave me now because the Bible continues to talk about what it, believe, what it means to be in Christ. Don't overlook that little preposition in. If any man is in Christ, uh, if any man is in Christ, and, and that, that's important. Like Revelation 14, 13, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. He didn't say just blessed are the dead because that's not true. Because some people pass away who are not in the Lord. And so then we must believe in Jesus, believe in Christ. We must belong to Christ. And one of my favorites is Romans chapter 6. When he talks, first of all, he talks about how to, how, what should we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? This Romans 6 is a beautiful chapter, but I want you to notice first of all, he says, what shall we say? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? But by no means. 
Don't you know that when you were offering yourselves to someone to obey him as a slave, you are a slave to the one whom you obey? Whether you are a slave to sin, which leads to death, can be physical death, but it's bound to be spiritual death or to be obedience, which leads to righteousness. Now, then, verse, my favorite is verse 17. But thanks be to God. What are you grateful for? What are you grateful for this morning? Uh, just, just the surface things, just the physical things. Uh, we have food, clothing, and shelter. We are blessed better than we deserve. But what are you really thankful? Does, does the spiritual enter in there somewhere? But thanks be to God, though you were used to be slaves to sin, slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were trusted. You have been made free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Isn't that good? That there are two kinds of slaves. I'm either a slave to sin or I'm a slave to righteousness. Righteousness, of course, is what the Lord is and what the Lord taught. He's righteous. And so then he said, you have obeyed from the heart. In fact, the NIV, this translation says wholeheartedly. In other words, you just didn't get wet. You just didn't really mean it when you made the good confession that I believe that Jesus is a Christ, the Son of the living God. You meant every word of that. And you turned your back on sin. You turned your life around. You had to stop doing what you were doing that was leading you away from the Lord and cling to the things that cause you to stay with the Lord. That's the reason the Bible talks about putting to death. Paul talks about that in so many of his writings, that you put to death the form of life. You put to death the things that you shouldn't be doing to begin with. I can remember in talking with people about becoming a Christian that you have to, you have to put away so many things. Yes, but what you have to put away, what you have to put to death, you need to because it will lead to death. It can lead to physical death. Look how, look what's happened with, uh, I mentioned it again today, uh, this, the beginning of the year. I, I don't know that it's my age or what it is, but I've just never heard of so many horrible things happening to each other. That people killing family members, people killing other people, people just shooting people because of the color of their skin or because of, of what they believe. This is a crazy world. And so then we either live for the Lord or we live for self. When Paul was describing the time to come, the end of days in 2 Timothy chapter 3, he said, now I want you to get ready for the last days. And I think we're, I know we're in it. He said, men shall be lovers of themselves. You can't say it any plainer than that. Why, what causes people to do the things they do? They're looking out for number one. They're looking out for themselves. And the idea of trying to save others or serve others or do things for others never cross their mind. When you deny that there's a God, that just leaves one other person to be God, and that's you. And we came out years ago and in the late 60s with this God is dead theory. And somebody may not realize that they have followed that philosophy, but when they have, like in, in uh, Judges chapter 21 and verse 25, it says, And there was no king at Israel, and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. When you don't have a king, you become king. You make one for yourself. You start doing only what you want to do. And let me ask you this morning, and let me ask us this morning, do you ever do anything you don't want to do? <laughs> uh, I, I mean by that, do, are, we, are we people that want to cooperate? 
cooperate with, like John 17, it's John 7, 17. He said, he that willeth to do my will. You got to want to do the Lord's will. You got two choices. Like, Jer like Joshua said in Joshua 24, 15, choose you this day. I love it. I think he's standing up before two and a half million people and he says, y'all make up your mind. Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether it be the gods beyond the river and whose land you now dwell. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. End of discussion. And Israel had a problem throughout the rest of the Old Testament because they couldn't make up their mind if they were going to serve God or they were going to serve Baal. And there was a time when they tried to do both. And just like Saul was found out, you can't do both. Partial obedience is not obedience. And so then in this Romans chapter 6 is my favorite. He says, you belong to Christ. And he says that in the beginning when he says, by no means, we who died to sin, how shall we live any longer therein? Or know ye not that as many of us who were us, who were baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death? This is that form that he talks about in verse 17. And then we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And he says, The gospel that I preached unto you, how that Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried, and that he was raised the third day. That's the death, burial, and resurrection. Paul here talks about the death to sin, the buried with Christ through baptism, and the resurrection to, to be raised to walk in newness of life. And so that's the way you belong to Christ. And then one other verse before time runs out this morning is Galatians 3, 26 and 27. You are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Right now. Why? Because you belong to Christ. First you believed in Christ. Then you belong to Christ. For as many of you, verse 27, who were baptized into Christ did put on Christ. So we have Him for our own. Our time is gone for this morning. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll be with me next week as we'll continue this discussion about who is the Lord that I should obey His voice. Until then. Abundant Living, a ministry of the Mayfair Church of Christ. A place where children are loved, where families are strengthened, where teens learn to serve, and grandparents are special. Mayfair, truly a family place for all ages. The Mayfair Church of Christ. We're saving a special place for you. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the